and we are right here on Drizzle Land to update you on the wrestling world and what is going on. Lots of crazy stuff. So we're going to get into it. We're going to have some fun with this video, guys. So the first thing I want to talk about is NXT releases as of today. Abby Lace, Sage Beckett, uh, who were actually wrestling fairly decent matches i was kind of surprised that they were actually released because they were using them um against uh you know known women uh in that division in nxt i mean they're wrestling people like amber moon and uh you know other well-known talents that were there so i was a little surprised that they let them go um I'm hearing that there's going to be more releases actually before WrestleMania, so we could see some updates with that situation. Um, so what else in NXT? Well, basically, the plan for New Orleans is Ember Moon versus Shayna Baszler, which we already knew that. Um, there's going to be a brand new... Uh, championship belt, the North American Championship. Um, there's going to be a six-man ladder match that's going to be held for that championship. Um, Ricochet and EC3 and Velveteen Dream will be in that match. Uh, they're also talking about putting Adam Cole in that match, uh, along with Lars Sullivan. Um, I say that that's an amazing match. They should do that at TakeOver if they want to do that. I think that that would really help NXT out. Um, there's going to be a three-way uh, triple threat uh, Dusty Rhodes um, championship tag team match. I guess what's going to happen basically is not only is the winner of that match going to receive the Dusty Rhodes championship trophy, but they're going to be given the, the NXT Championship Tag Team uh, titles, which NXT TakeOver right now, New Orleans, actually looks like a fairly good show, honestly. Uh, I'm looking very forward to it. I think that they're doing a great job building towards it. Um, but we still want to see Johnny Wrestling versus Tommaso Ciampa. We're... I was really hoping we are going to get that match at some point in time. I hope that it comes up soon. I think the fans deserve to see that match. And um, I would even make it some type of a street fight, honestly. Because um, we haven't really seen Johnny, you know, honestly, after he he left NXT, we haven't really seen much of him. And I that's a shame because I wish that they would have just never even done that storyline. I wish they would have just kept him in NXT. He was doing wonderful things. Um... And the championship situation is Aleister Black gets his title shot against um, the champion, um, which I can never pronounce his name, uh, Andrade. I think that's his first name. I can never pronounce his last name. I'm just going to call him Andrade. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I, th I think NXT TakeOver New Orleans is going to be a, a really, really... Uh, interesting experience i think for fans um okay so following up that we're gonna get right into the roman reigns case which is basically supposedly there's evidence of him purchasing over fifteen hundred dollars worth of steroids within the last 10 years um but under alias names so they don't really have his exact full name but they also have other wrestlers as well i think 26 to the exam between uh richard rodriguez and basically what's happening with that situation is um the video that was supposed to be posted with all the list of the wrestlers that had purchased steroids that, that were in that steroids ring uh with doping um we apparently don't have enough uh information i'm guessing um as far as they don't have enough records right now to actually go after reigns and some of these other wrestlers 
Um, so we're not really sure what's happening with that situation. Obviously, the match um, with Lesnar is still on right now. Um, the backstory that they're going to be doing for WrestleMania with this match is Reigns is basically going to be looking like the hero and Lesnar is going to be looking like basically the villain and try to celebrate Lesnar's accomplishments basically in WWE for all his all his years that he put in and I don't like that personally I did I don't know like I don't I just don't understand why they just don't make it a triple threat and just throw in Braun Strowman in, in that situation I mean right now there's no plan for Strowman to even have a match um, which makes no sense whatsoever. Like, I just don't get that. I mean, Braun Strowman's been, like, destroying people at every pay-per-view he's been involved in, and I just don't understand why they're not pushing this guy. I think that's who should be WWE Universal Champion, in my opinion. But, um, so, let's get into WrestleMania, actually. So, there's been four, basically, confirmed matches so you have Ronda Rousey, Kurt Angle versus Stephanie and Triple H. Um, you have The Miz defending the Intercontinental Championship against Finn Balor and Seth Rollins. I think that that's an amazing match. I say do it. Um, and then obviously you have the Andre the Giant Battle Memorial uh, Royal match, whatever it is. I don't know. Um, then you basically have... It sounds like Alexa Bliss versus Nia Jax. Um, I think that that would actually be a decent match. I would even throw in maybe Sasha Banks or Bailey, in my opinion, or maybe have Bailey versus Sasha Banks. That's what most people want. Um, I think that they should throw that together too. Um, and then you obviously have AJ Styles defending the WWE championship um I don't know if I agree with a triple threat with Cena and Nakamura I think if anything I would just have Cena lose at Fastlane Sunday and then have the Undertaker interfere in the match like have him choke slam Cena or something to set up some type of a match between those two. That's the match everybody wants to see anyways. I mean, let's just do it and get it over with. Um, Jeff Hardy is officially cleared. He will be at WrestleMania. Um, so my theory is he's going to be some type of involvement with him in the Matt Hardy versus Bray Wyatt total deletion match. At the Hardy's Compound, which I think is going to be a freaking amazing match, in my opinion. Um, and then we, it sounds like we might be getting the New Day versus the Usos and maybe Shelton Benjamin and Chad Gable and like a tag team ladder match. That's what I'm hearing as far as rumors going right now. Um, I don't see why they wouldn't want to do that match. I think that would actually really help SmackDown out, honestly. Um, and then we have to consider, my theory is, is that Asuka is going to be facing Charlotte Flair because Charlotte's already pretty much said, you know, Hey, I want, I want Asuka. I want to end her streak. I want to prove my point that I'm the best female wrestler in the world. So I think that we should get that match, honestly. Um, the rumors are, as far as the Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn rivalry between Shane McMahon and, and what's going on with Daniel Bryan. Um, zilch, nada. Like, I've been reading all over the internet, and they've just basically been saying um, that there's no plans for them to have any type of a match, which... I just don't get it. Like, why would you keep with this rivalry for all these months on SmackDown Live and then you just do nothing with it? Like, why? That makes no sense whatsoever. Um, I'm hoping that Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens, honestly, maybe 
Shane McMahon or Daniel Bryan as like special guest referees at Mania. Like that would make total sense, honestly. Um so and then we have to consider the whole situation with the United States Championship. Um nothing has been booked yet for Mania. I'm hoping that it would end up being like Bobby Roode and in, in like Randy Orton versus like Ginger Mahal or somebody like I, I, I don't know they need to do something with it at this point in time um so that's where we are as far as Wrestlemania right now um some matches have already been booked so some of them are just being talked about and they're kind of building up storylines um after WrestleMania, Brock Lesnar's contract is officially up, so he will be leaving the company, guys. Um, he's been spotted with Dana White with UFC events, so it sounds like he's going to go back to the UFC. Um, they're also saying that Bobby Lashley's already signed his contract, so he's probably going to be showing up at some point in time in one of these events. We don't really know yet. Um, okay. ROH Network, here we go, ROH's online network will be up and running uh, soon with live content, pay-per-views, uh, video vault featuring classic matches, um, interviews, behind the scenes, and documentaries about ROH. What do I think about that? I think that it's amazing. I think that ROH should have done this years ago. They're one of the top companies in the world. I mean, people like Eddie Edwards came from there, Kevin Owens, Roderick Strong. Uh, Jay Lethal is still there. The Briscoes are still there. Um, they have the Young Bucks. They have Cody Rhodes. They have Marty Skrull. They have every underrated talent. The company is awesome they've got lots of great talent i mean think about daniel bryan as well he came from there i mean nigel mcginnis he came from there they're building their own women's division i think that that's great because they're going to be getting other talent from other companies coming with these contracts and they're going to start building their women's division and i think with emma there that's going to really help the situation uh, i've heard that summer ray might be coming in too um so that could yeah I mean, I think that they're on the right track there, too. Um, okay. Where are we at now? Okay. So, Fox has been very interested in meeting with the McMahons and the executive board on possibly getting the rights in to bring... Monday Night Raw to the Fox Network in 2019. That means SmackDown would go to Fox Sports 1 and they would air it there. And then they probably would start airing Raw uh, on regular Fox Networks, which means regular providers uh, who don't have cable networks uh, would be able to just watch Raw on Fox on Mondays. And I think that that's actually not a bad idea. I think that you'll build your fan base again. Um, I don't think that, that wrestling should be on, on cable networks because not everybody has cable and they can't really afford it. So I think that's a wonderful idea. Um, let me think here. So I've also been watching some Impact Wrestling recently, and I have to say um, it's getting better, um, but I think they're going to have to start building the characters of the Knockouts division much better uh, as far as storyline, uh, match booking. Um, Laura Van Ness is already gone, so... You bring in Taya Valkyrie again, and that's great because I like to have that rivalry and see it between Rosemary and her up for the Knockouts Championship. I think that would actually help build the Knockouts division again. But the only thing is, is then what are you going to do with Allie and some of the other talent that's there who are just 
setting there basically trying to get their their spot um now ove the rivalry between them and lax i think has been pretty interesting um uh, we've seen lots of good matches so far as far as rivalry um but again i mean El, the whole El Patron and, and Johnny Impact and Austin Aries now and I mean I I don't know like Eli yeah Eli Drake is still there but uh I don't know like I just don't understand why we need to have the same people in in the main event like every week practically on impact um i don't understand why they're not giving other younger talent opportunities there um i just i just don't get it like and i know that there's new management and stuff and that they're trying to start all over but i think that you need to start listening to the fans and you need to understand that TNA Impact Wrestling was a huge accomplishment, honestly, throughout the early 2000s and, and honestly up until probably 2015, 16. Um, I think that what happened was you really didn't listen to the wrestlers. You weren't building their characters or their, their storylines correctly. Um, and that's why they left. I mean, look at the talent that left already. Um, I mean, half your stars have already left. So, I mean, you have to, at some point in time, have to start building your younger talent. Um, and that's fine, you know, if you want to build some of the other veterans around them. But you can't have horrible storylines and expect people to just believe everything um, and, and want to pay the money to to watch the pay per view matches when you know that it's going to be predictable and, and it's going to get boring. I mean, the whole thing about Congo Kong and versus the Abyss and Jimmy Jacobs, like I just don't get it. I don't really think it works very well. I think that was, it's just not. It's not going to work. It's going to be one of those horrible matches that that they're going to regret doing. And I think that they they just need to scrap it. I mean. It's just, it's not very good at all. Like, it's just boring, man. Like, just don't do it anymore. Get rid of it. Scrap it. Nobody wants to see it. Um, Lucha Underground Season 4 just started taping, and they're, they've they got some interesting talent there now. Um, I'm looking forward to what's happening with that situation. So, that's what I wanted to do. I just wanted to kind of update people on what's going on. Um... And one more thing, Rey Mysterio is injured. It looks like he might have a torn bicep muscle. So he might not be making the New Japan date uh, or Mania because he was supposed to be at Mania as well. Um, it sounds like he will be out indefinitely, uh, six to eight months possibly, if it's the type of surgery that they're describing. So he will be out indefinitely. Um, Bobby Fish has also suffered an injury um, to his, I believe his calf muscle, I think. Yeah, something like that. Yes, calf muscle. Um, so he will be out at least three weeks. So there are some people who are injured right now who will be out for a while. Um... It's a shame with Ray because I was really hoping that Ray was going to be able to compete at WrestleMania. I really wanted to see him face, uh, you know, somebody in the cruiserweight division or something at WrestleMania. I think that would have been great for them. Uh, speaking of 205 Live, I've been really impressed with what's happening with the tournament. I think we're getting the the right competition. It's NXT, you know, NXT is is good too i think that they're really trying to build the fan base up again um, but i've just been really impressed with the cruiserweight division i think that we're getting the matches that we deserve and uh they're not boring or anything so okay guys i'm gonna get out of your hair